let me share my screen here. Uh, perfect, yeah. Well, I was, I was asked to deliver a speech and I haven't been asked to do so in quite a long time. So I'm gonna try to make it look like I am not reading, although I'm actually doing so. Okay, uh, and I will try to stick to time, okay. Well, uh, I am a 47 year old white gay guy, an immigrant and a married man. I lean towards the nerdy type. I have a PhD after all. I wear thick and colorful glasses and enjoy literature about the end of the world. I am not a total alien to technology. In the end, I have two iPhones, a laptop, a tablet, and even an iWatch. I video conference using Zoom, Skype, and Teams on a daily basis. I am not just a regular user of common project management software, but I am also very well versed in more complex technologies for statistical analysis. Yet, when people ask me about my reflections of this pandemic, I always give the same answer. It scared the shit out of me. And it did so because it made me feel otherness like I have never felt before. And this otherness basically flows from a technological barrier. My name is Guillermo Morello, and I am a diversity manager at Diversity Works New Zealand, the national body for workplace diversity and inclusion in Otiaroa. Simply put, my job involves reading tremendous amounts of empirical studies on diversity, translate their results into clear projects across different industries and sectors, and help these navigate the intricacies of their implementation. A big part of what I do also involves training. Just seven weeks ago, I was asked to move all of my content to an online training platform and start doing my job online. I felt totally hopeless and mostly helpless. My first attempts were a total disaster. And every time something bad happened, people around me mostly told me things such as, don't worry, you are great at what you do, just not very good at technology. Or don't worry, we will get you some tech help. Often, the tech person just looked at me, spoke something in riddles, and later gave me a condescending smile, like saying, don't worry, I will do it for you. Even my young, putative son laughed hard at me yesterday when I told him I had been invited to do a tech talk. Through this COVID-19 pandemic, I discovered that my youth of technology, as it is the, probably the case for many people like me, had been selected and mostly used as means to boost my individuality. But I was mostly ignorant about how to use it to enhance collaboration and promote productive interactions. And that was a kick in the guts because a big part of what I do involves persuading skeptics about two things the positive outcomes of collaborative diversity and the benefits of more flexible types of working modalities. After seven weeks of confinement, I can now see the role of, of diversity in technology as a two-folded enterprise. On the one hand, we have a need for having more diverse and inclusive teams leading the technological sector. That is fair and needed. But at the same time, it is essential to inform the industry about the key role they play in facilitating discussions and interactions through the development of solutions, languages, and symbols that are graspable and accessible to everyone. I suddenly realized that this put tech people at the center of a core discussion for the future of diversity. So what should I tell these people? I guess I could tell them, help us increasing diversity, because when you do so, you help us and help yourself to achieve three types of positive outcomes. First are social or societal outcome, which involve equity, co-production, and social cohesion. In other words, doing diversity 
is the right thing to do. And when you do it, you help the societies in which you operate. But second, if I have not persuaded you yet, there are productivity outcomes that you can achieve. The first and most important one for you is probably fostering innovation. Remember that if in your teams, everyone looks the same, thinks the same and acts in the same way, innovation is less likely to occur. You can also boost motivation. I have a whole pile of empirical research on this uh, subject. Finally, you can enhance your team performance. Indeed, bringing more diverse people into your teams directly increases the number of ways to analyze and solve problems. We call this the informational perspective on diversity and it's something that uh, is uh, very sought after these days in the technological world. But well, if I have not convinced you yet, we have a third layer that we call prospectivity outcome. And this is a very simple but brutal statement. A diversity is gonna come because the world is changing. And you have two basic options. You can sit and wait until diversity comes and bites you all in the bomb, or you can be proactive, ride the forces of change. And if you do that, you can project better futures and adapt to an ever-changing environment. But remember that if you just do diversity by bringing people from non-dominant groups to your team and you do nothing, nothing is gonna happen. If you want to collect this nice basket of goodies, what you need to do is to create cultures of inclusion. Cultures that allow everyone to bring the best version of themselves to the workplace. This posit challenges for the tech industry for many reasons. One is probably the idea that the tech sector is more friendly to diversity than other sectors. After all, the archetype of the tech leader seems to flow from numerous stories of exclusion and from being socially awkward. Yet, before this session, I have been reading many stories of exclusion coming from many voices in technology. One of such stories come from a person named Squinky, a non-binary gender game designer who once wrote about her own job. Making games is easy. Belonging is hard. Please help people like Squinky and me to belong. Thank you.